one of one of his uh, string uh, pieces, uh, chamber music pieces that uh, is also one of his most popular compositions. If you've been following the Winter Symphony Orchestra, they performed a wonderful uh, symphony from him, La Casa del Diabolo. Uh, he was an Italian composer that lived most of his time in Spain. And th this piece, I thought, it, I thought of it because it was, as I mentioned before, a great way for us to get to know each other. And in this case, uh, the strings, just specifically. That's why they were waiting for us, and that's why it's the first piece in the program. Now, the next one, uh, it's a very, uh, very important piece for me, personally. The composer is Rodrigo Loman. He is a composer from Jalapa. Uh, if you have read a little bit of my bio, you notice that I was living in Jalapa before coming here. Jalapa is the capital city of the state of Veracruz. Jalapa, uh, this is not important, but that's where jalapeños come from. Jalapa, jalapeños. <laughs> Actually, people from Jalapa are called jalapeños. <laughs> it's funny, but... Um, Tlazocamati, that's the title of the piece. It's hard to pronounce because it's not Spanish. It is uh, Nahuatl. It is one of the most um, ancient languages in Mexico. Uh, it is from the Huastecos. Uh, that's, that's some of the, the people that, the culture that lived in, in a region in north of um, the state of Veracruz and south of Tamaulipas, a lot of those states that are bordering um, the, the Gulf of Mexico almost and going inwards. Um, they were a very rich culture and we still keep their language and there's a lot of people who still speak it. Tlazocamati in Nahuatl means thank you. Um, and that's the reason why I decided this should, be, this should be a piece I perform and we perform in our first concert. Because I'm extremely grateful for everything that has happened to me in the past uh, three months almost. I got here September 8th, so it's not even been three months yet. Ha, wow. But Rodrigo Loman is a very good friend of mine. Uh, I premiered one of his pieces that he composed for my previous orchestra in Mexico, so I decided why not to share a little bit of my own culture as we did with the first piece, Mexica Cielito Lindo, uh, but in this case something even more personal. He wrote this piece uh, recently for pre precisely youth orchestras. In this case, he thought about it for Mexico. He never thought that one of his best friends was going to be conducting <laughs> up north in Canada, and I was like, hey, I, got, I, I, I know the perfect piece for this group, it's La Socamati, and we were rehearsing it, and after a while I said, hey, why don't you, like, we have these uh, number of musicians, as you can see, and I said, why don't you make a, a version for us? So uh, after, like, uh, like, I would say three weeks or a month, uh, I knew I had the strength of the group, and I was like, okay, you can do this and that and that, make sure to write this uh, new version, and he actually sent us within a week, a new version specifically written for them. Uh, it is dedicated to the Winter Symphony Youth Orchestra, and uh, it is inspired in Mexican, uh, in a Mexican folk style that's called Son Huasteco, uh, precisely in some sones that are called Costumbre. They're used specifically for very special occasions. Uh, let's say uh, someone, someone's dead, for example, or someone's being born. Both are, both are in a way very special. Uh, like for someone who reaches a certain age in Mexico, they celebrate uh, the 15 years, the quinceañeras. Uh, they do that then too. So it is uh, those sones, not this one, but the ones that this is inspired in, are uh, played in that. Like just say thank you in very special occasions. So, of course, this is a very special occasion, and it is also my way to say thank you to all of you. Tlaso Camati by Rodrigo Loman.
and I totally forgot to mention this is a very difficult piece. Did you, did you hear those rhythms? That is uh, imitating a little guitar called Harana Huasteca. And if you heard that instrument in the back over there, that is what is called an azote, which is with the fingers you hit the strings and it sounds So that's the whole idea of, 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 of this piece. Um, it, was, it was really beautiful sharing this with you and we're gonna go to a more standard repertoire now. Uh, this next piece is the Andantino from the Symphony Number no. 4 by Tchaikovsky, written in 1877. And this is a, this is a very important piece also for, for the symphonic repertoire in general. But we are playing the slow movement. And uh, in this case, it helps us a lot to get an idea of this uh, repertoire, to get to know it, and it also like, puts the, the seat there to get to know more of the music of, of such a great composer. And this piece, um, well, it is well known that Tchaikovsky had this uh, patron uh, for whom he worked, well, not really worked, but this patron was giving him money.